Good evening, everyone, and welcome to worship this evening here at Calhoun First United Methodist Church. I have to keep reminding myself that it is evening and not morning because it's very, very late. It's almost Christmas Day. Now begin our worship service with our fellowship chorus. Good evening. Would you stand, greet your neighbor, and let us sing Good Christian Friends Rejoice. to worship is printed in your bulletin. Praise be to God. Blessed be the Lord God, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Lord, we gather here in your presence to remember the time when you came here And you had a manger for your bed. Lord, we come tonight to worship and to praise you. May we praise you in spirit and in truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn tonight, or carol tonight, is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, number 200. Gomez family will now lead us in the writing of the Please join me in our responsive reading. Our Savior's birth is celebrated with bold faith. May our hearts be willing. Like Mary, who showed humble surrender. May our hearts be willing. Like Joseph, who exhibited unconditional trust. May May our hearts be willing. Like the angels who sang glorious praise. May our hearts be willing. For all who are willing to receive the gift of the Savior born in Bethlehem. Grant that we might have the peace of Christ as we would. 
the love of Christ as we act, and the grace of Christ as we speak. Tonight we light all the candles. The first candle is the hope shining for those worn thin by times of waiting. The second candle is the hope shining for those worn down by w- with wearied souls. The third candle captures hopeful expectation of those eagerly watching for God's glory in our day. The fourth candle is the hope of a new tomorrow shining for those seeking freedom from the wounds of this world. Tonight we light the Christ candle. This candle radiates the hope of Jesus Christ to all who are willing to receive it. As Donna is moving over to the piano, uh, I want to share just a thought with you. Um, Bob asked me a couple of weeks ago if I would sing this particular song, I Wonder, I Wonder as I Wonder. And uh, I was just really thrilled because John Jacob Niles, who uh, arranged and kind of gathered this song, it's actually an old Appalachian tune. And uh, John Jacob Niles uh, was uh, a musician who gathered folk music, European folk music, Appalachian folk music, and uh, put them on paper so that they will last through the ages, thank goodness. And I was really excited about that because John Jacob Niles came to my college many years ago and uh, directed our chorale as we sang this wonderful song. Worship with me as I sing. I wander as I wander out under the 
dumb will speak the praises of the Lamb. Oh, Mary, did you know your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know your baby boy will one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Oh, Mary. John, and thank each and all of you for your worshipful presence this evening as we gather on this Christmas Eve. On this sacred night, through the years of my ministry, a cherished tradition for me has been to gather with the children at the Christmas tree and there to share with them and with all of us the Christmas gospel. So, boys and girls, if you'll gather with me here. At the Christmas tree, it'll be my delight to share with you from Luke chapter 2, the Christmas narrative. Now, moms and dads, you look up here. This is a beautiful... Just a breathtaking moment in the Father's house with all of these precious children to gather as we celebrate the miracle of Christ's birth. Thank you, boys and girls, for being here tonight. You're a tremendous blessing to our congregation, not only this Christmas Eve, but every day throughout the year. Let's listen now, not only with our ears, but with our hearts to the Christmas story. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah. You will find a baby wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone back into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. 
But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told unto them. It's during this time of the year, during this sacred and joyful season, that all of us become like you. We're reminded that in the presence of God, we're his children. And as his children, we celebrate the, ga- the greatest gift ever given, the gift of Christ, his son, and our savior. Thank you, boys and girls, for all that you mean to your families, to our community, to the church, and to the kingdom of God. Let's bow together for a brief prayer. Eternal God, our Father, tonight as we hear again this old familiar narrative, we are humbled and reverently, Father, do we lift our voices and our hearts in praise to you. Father, thank you for the priceless and precious gift of Christ, born as a little baby in a manger of Bethlehem. O oh God, grant that as well he might be born in us, that in each of our hearts and very lives, Christ might be born. That, Father God, day by day he might live and reign in each of us, and through us, O oh God, your children, others might come to faith, and through faith in you find Christ his love, and his salvation. This we pray in that name above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O He. was born, O night divine, O night, O night century BC, the Lord God said to his people Israel through his prophet Isaiah, Behold, 
a virgin shall conceive, and she shall bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. More than 700 years later, toward the dawning of the first century A.D., the Lord God, through an angel in a dream to Joseph, said, Joseph, son of David, be not afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she shall bear a son, and he shall be named Jesus, for he has come to save his people from their sins. For all of this has taken place to fulfill what the prophet had said. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and she shall bear a son. And he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. How appropriate on this Christmas Eve that we gather here in the Father's house to celebrate the coming, the birth, the advent of our Lord Jesus. Surely he is none other than the Lord God, Emmanuel. He is God with us. Jesus of Nazareth, born in the little dirt village of Bethlehem, placed in the straw of a manger. Fully God, fully human. Fully divine, fully flesh and blood. In the person of Jesus the Christ, God the Father has revealed supremely his nature his character, but most especially his agape love. It's in the person of our Savior that we see not only God, but we see the kinds of persons God wants us to be. God has come to us in the person of his Son and our Savior. The term Emmanuel is much like the term the God-man. Jesus is with us constantly, consistently. Just a few days before his death on the cross, Jesus said to his first disciples, I must leave you, but I will come again. I will not leave you nor abandon you, but I will be with you. And through the indwelling, empowering Holy Spirit, in every believer's life, the very presence of Christ is felt. And through the life of each Christian, the Lord Jesus is living and reigning. It's appropriate that in our worship this evening that we remember that a tremendous segment of his earthly life was what happened during that last week of his life. Jesus with his disciples had entered Jerusalem earlier that afternoon from the little dirt village of Bethany just two or three miles away. They had come to Jerusalem to observe the Passover This would now be the third Passover Jesus would observe with his disciples those three years of his public ministry. As they gathered there in the upper room in Jerusalem, the scriptures tell us that after having observed the Passover, the Lord Jesus took a loaf of bread. It was a loaf of bread that was not broken in their observance of Passover. Jesus first offered a prayer a prayer of gratitude, a prayer of praise to the Father for who the Father is and for all the Father does. And then the scriptures tell us that after the prayer, Jesus broke that loaf of bread. Most unusual. As every eye around the table was fastened upon him, Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take now of this bread and eat of this bread in remembrance of me. They didn't fully understand all that Jesus was saying that night, but the next day at Golgotha, they would witness precisely and fully what Jesus had said. He was, he is the Lamb of God who came into the world as the Lord God Emmanuel, God with us to die with us and for us. And tonight, dear friends, as we celebrate his coming, his birth, he says to us, eat of this bread in remembrance of me. According to the scriptures, before they left the upper room to go to Gethsemane, Jesus took a cup. 
and he filled the cup with the red wine they had just used for Passover. Holding the cup before them, he said, Now this is my blood. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of many. Then he said to them, I want you to drink of this cup, all of you. Now remember around the table, there was Judas, who within just a few minutes would betray him and sell him. There was Thomas, who would say, unless I can see with my eyes and touch with my hands, I'll not believe that Jesus is risen. And of course there was Peter, Peter who spoke so impulsively, Peter who spoke before he thought, Peter who boasted, and oftentimes he must have embarrassed the Savior. And along with the others, all of them with their imperfections and their blemishes. But dear friends and dear brothers and sisters, to all of them as to all of us, Jesus says, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed, which is poured out for you and indeed for many for the remission and forgiveness of sin. We come now to his table. We come not to a table nor a supper of any church nor of any denomination. We come to the Lord's table. We come to his feast. He encourages us, he bids us, he appeals to us, come to my table as you are and eat of this bread and drink of this cup. And as we do in obedience to him, he becomes more and more the Lord Emmanuel with us and within us. Something wonderful, something mysterious happens in this transaction For we come as we are, acknowledging our unworthiness and yet receiving his grace and his mercy. We leave different people after having come to his table. And so tonight, dear friend, every person, regardless of age or religious religious affiliation or circumstance, all of us are invited on this Christmas Eve to his table to partake of his meal, his body broken, his blood shed. May we pray together. Our Father and our God, we can't fathom, nor can we understand all that happened there on Golgotha, nor all that happens here this evening at this your altar. But Father, by faith we come, and as we are, O God, we open our hearts, our minds, our spirits to you. And Father, we praise you tonight that Christ did come, that he continues to come, and that Father, one day in your divine time, he shall come to receive, to embrace his bride, the church. So Father God, during this interim while, help us who believe to be found faithful, to be his body gathered not only for worship, but commissioned and scattered for ministry into all the segments of our humanity. Father, grant now as we come to this, the Lord's table, that Christ would be made more real to us and then would be made, and then would be made more real to our world through us. This we pray in his name. <laughs>